competitors of the people of the Republic of China who are going to play badminton against us tonight. I hope you're not too fit. Because we're all <laughs> I'm sure the lady will translate later. <laughs> now, I think it's appropriate that we just say a few words on this occasion. It was on September the 13th, 1893, when a meeting was convened at Dunbar, six way Willie Go South Sea, at two o'clock in the afternoon, at which the Badminton Association was founded. Its rules were formulated and its laws drafted. You've been there this morning, I think, most of you. It was Dunbar in those days, then it was lost, but Mr. and Mrs. Whiting, who we're most appreciative for their help in this, have renamed it Dunbar, and you saw the new name, pl name uh, clerk on the wall opposite the centenary clerk, and we appreciate that, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Whiting, and your, and your help. Now, from small acorns, a large oak tree grew into the IBF. Now that body has itself about 120 acorns at the last count that I heard. They may have had a few more since. Large and small. The IBF are inclined to use them, sometimes to bump one on the head. But it's always in the most benevolent and polite way, of course. But that's what they're there for, and so they should. Now then, uh, we have one or two messages of congratulation. This is the first time I've had a chance to uh, disclose these publicly. And uh, I've got three of the association on meeting the team with best wishes. I, I have replied to those in what I think Way. Now you will gather that because my period office coincides with the centenary, I am sometimes referred to as the centenary president. I can assure you, however, that the rumour going around that, uh, that I was present at that meeting in 1893 <laughs> has no foundation whatsoever in fact. And I do not feel at all at the moment uh, like a centurion. However, my wife, having seen the front cover of the latest issue of Batman said, who is that other old gentleman on the cover? <laughs> now then, I would like uh, to make a, a presentation to the Lord Mayor on behalf of the City of Council, uh, just a small centenary memento. This, um, if, we, if I could...
Now, as a question of sport returns to our screens tonight, here's a sporting conundrum for you. Where and when was the modern game of badminton devised? Well, believe it or not, it all happened at South Sea in Hampshire a hundred years ago, and today was the day for the centenary celebrations. Six Waverley Grove, South Sea has to be one of the more unlikely venues for the birth of a modern sport. But today, the world's top badminton officials congregated outside this Victorian villa for the unveiling of a commemorative plaque. It was here, a hundred years ago, that the rules of modern badminton were first written down and the Badminton Association founded. This is how the game would have looked when it was first played in the 1860s, devised as an antidote to the boredom of weekend house parties at Badminton House, ruined by rain. By the 1890s, it was beginning to take off. The game had no rules, and so they couldn't really play competition without some rules. So a meeting of 14 clubs took place in this house on the 13th of September, 1893, when they formed what was called the Badminton Association. And why here? Why Portsmouth? We can only think it's because it was all uh, military gentlemen who started the thing off, and we can only assume that they were, we don't really know, but that they were all based around uh, with Portsmouth with its military traditions. Those genteel pioneers would barely recognize today's game, particularly the way it's played by the Chinese. They're joining the centenary celebrations by playing six internationals in Britain, the first at Portsmouth's Mountbatten Centre tonight. Like many sports we gave to the world, badminton is now dominated by other nations. England has managed to beat China only four times in 25 internationals. Tonight, England's manager is hoping home advantage will tell. When we play in Asia, we play to 10,000 people a night, and the players are used to it, so I'd really like to hear the crowd in there shouting for England tonight. With Southampton's Commonwealth champion, Helen Troke, now in retirement, and youngsters like Steve Isaac from Sussex not quite ready for the big time yet, there'll be no local heroes to cheer for tonight. But victory would be a pleasant way to celebrate the birthday of a sport now played by more than four million.